Welcome everybody to Looking to the East. I'm your host, Steve Zerker. Thank you very much for uh, viewing our program today. We have a very special topic that we're exploring, uh, having to do with cross-cultural living in Japan. Specifically, we're gonna be looking at cross-cultural relationships, marriages. And I have, uh, for the second time on my show, Dr. Reggie Paul, who's a practicing clinical psychologist, a counselor, and focuses on cross-cultural matters, specifically on cross-cultural marriages and so forth. So we have an expert on this topic joining us today. Reggie, good morning to you. And thank good you morning, very much. Uh, yeah, very much for participating. Right. Now, in, in, in full disclosure, uh, I think it's important for me to point out that both of us are involved in cross-cultural marriages. Both of us are married to Japanese women. Uh, Indeed, I've been married, yes. Uh, yes, for uh, 20, it'll be 24 years now uh, yeah. to my, my lovely wife. And Reggie, how long have you been married? 14, to 14, so 14 and counting. <laughs> so between the two of us, we have decades worth of experience, but uh, mostly we're going to rely on Reggie's clinical research and his observations of uh, cross-cultural relationships, because he often counsels couples that are in cross-cultural relationships that, that need assistance. Okay, so Reggie, why don't we just start with a basic understanding of what you perceive the differences being between a non-cross-cultural marriage, I guess we can look at American to American or Japanese to Japanese, and then a mixed marriage like the ones that uh, you and I are in where there's a foreigner and uh, a Japanese partner. Okay. Well, I think the first thing to consider is that you've got two cultures. When you have a cross-cultural marriage, you've got, uh, you've got people coming from two different cultures. And so you've got, a, in this particular case, you have somebody who's a native Japanese person and then somebody who's a native from another country. And culture is a, uh, how do I say, is a very uh, nebulous thing. It's hard to say exactly what culture is, but um, you can see the effects of culture in a lot of different ways. And how the uh, uh, culture affects relationships, how people do relationships is very much influenced by culture. Mm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so Reggie, um, when I, I lived abroad in Japan when I was a student, yeah. so I went through the culturation process right. and then later met my wife and uh, my future wife, and then we, we got married. So I was somewhat aware of that. How aware do you think... <clears throat> couples are when they begin dating let's say an expat comes to japan or sometimes military people because we have military marriages as well how aware are they of these issues my, my my sense is that they're generally not aware of these cultural profound impacts i would agree, I would agree with that and that's and part of the reason for that is because culture culture is something that you grow up within but you don't you just learn it kind of by osmosis by being in the middle of it you don't think mm -hmm. about it. It's not intentional. It just kind of happens. And so there's a lot of things that are part of culture that are just one culture considers normal or just common sense, or it's just the way things are done or whatever. And then all of a sudden you go to a, a different country where they have different culture and they do things differently. And so the result of this, and particularly when you get into a cross-cultural marriage is that you have a lot of surprises that you things that you don't expect because you don't, you never think about it. It's just kind of ordinary in your own culture. So you right. only find out these things a lot of the time in a cross-cultural marriage when something happens that creates some kind of a issue or conflict or something you're surprised about or whatever it is, something, you know, there's a lot of different ways that it can come out. Yeah, so <clears throat> marriage itself, um, you know, has its challenges. <laughs> Clearly, it, it's not. If you look at it, Reggie, uh, I wouldn't consider it to be a successful institution because when it comes to Japanese to Japanese marriages, we were talking before we went on air yeah. that the divorce rate there is 38% of the time. So if you bought a car and it failed 38% of the time, you know, it'd be taken off the market. 
And then for uh, foreign and Japanese divorces, the number is slightly higher at about 48%, according to what you told me. So 44. And then for the Americans that are viewing, is that correct, 48%? 40, 44, 44. 44%, sorry. Yeah. So just a little bit higher, six points higher. Mm. And then for the Americans that are viewing this, we, we, our divorce rate is easily 50%. <laughs> so you have this institution where there are challenges built into it already, even for couples where there isn't this cross-cultural issue. So how does the cross-cultural issues, what are some specific examples that you can think of of how the cross-cultural issues compound the challenges of being in a successful marriage? Well, to begin with, I think that uh, um, I mean, one of the basics of culture is values. You learn your values growing up in the culture, values of what you consider to be important. And people have different values about relative to things in marriage. Mm. You know, so things like communication, how to do communication, what's important about communication, um, you know, basic all the basics of life uh, in a in a marriage, having the money, living together, uh, oh, the wow. daily routines, um, sex, of course. In cultural surveys, one of the biggest issues that comes up is food. Wow. It's because Doesn't of- everybody love Japanese food, Reggie? Well, it, it, part of it is, yeah, right. Part of not everybody <laughs> loves Japanese food. Part of it I is see. the food itself, but the other part of it is how you do food. Do you sit together? Do you have, do you have meals mm. together? Do you talk during the mm. meals? Do you not? Some, in some cultures, they. They separate the men and the women, or they separate the, the adults and the children, or there's a lot of different mm. ways that you can, when do you eat? You know, um, all of these different kinds of things are all influenced by culture. So there can be, mm. food is, it's a, it often surprises people, but food is often one of the things that people have issues with in cross-cultural marriages, because it's not, you, people get very attached to their kind of food, you know, and how you do food. I see. Um, <clears throat> so given the, the stresses that are in a marriage, uh, what, what other kind of focal points come up in a cross-cultural marriage? What, what are the major stumbling blocks? You say food is, is one of them. Are, food, are there values, others that... Expectations. Yep. You know, what you expect of your partner to do and what you expect to how to handle stress or how to handle this or that all that kind of stuff um mm -hmm. relationships with other people mm -hmm. including family friends um uh ex-boyfriends and girlfriends things like mm -hmm. this um mm -hmm. uh they come up um uh i would say raising children has a lot of cultural has a lot of cultural aspects to it and there are often conflicts uh, between japanese and non-japanese about how to raise children and a lot mm. of people don't like the foreigners don't like the japanese educational system so this becomes you know this becomes an issue yeah and um, Bridget, it sounds uh, like there's a lot of challenges here I mean. well indeed indeed you know there are a lot of challenges right yeah <clears throat> well let's let's look at some of the beneficial aspects of this, we've, I guess we've talked mm. a little bit about some of the challenges. Right. So I, uh, I, um, I only have the one marriage that I can reference in my own life, but mm. I think uh, being married to a non-American right. uh, does provide a, a, a cultural richness. I guess it's the opposite side of what we've been talking about so far. Right. There are certainly challenges in terms of differences sure. in values and practices and so forth but it's also interesting to be married to an individual who does see the world in a in a different way that's right so that's right do you agree with that Reggie? so i would agree with that so if you agree with the diversity view of life then living a cross-cultural marriage is very much a part of that and in that mm. sense it becomes a um i say to people you need to like adventure you need, you need to like new ways of doing things, looking at things in different kinds of ways. One of the basic things that I think that is required, I mean, it's always required in any marriage, I think, but even more in a cross-cultural marriage is flexibility and um, willingness to consider other viewpoints, other ways of doing things and so on, that kind of thing. So 
I think that the uh, cross-cultural marriages are part of the future of the world if we're going to survive as a, as yeah, a species. I, I wanted to talk with you about that too. Um, I'm referencing a movie called Hafu. <clears throat> this is a, a movie made about 10 years ago. It's about right, the yeah, children of cross-cultural yep. marriages and they cited some statistics. Now this is a little bit old, but <clears throat> the number of intercultural marriages in Japan is significantly increasing. In fact, in our region, in Kansai, if I remember correctly, it was about 10%. Really? Wow. Yeah, and, and also that the these families, cross-cultural families, are producing more children on average mm. than Japanese families, which is, as everybody knows, uh, very, very low. I mean, the demographics right. in this country are, are really uh, depressing. So why do you think that's happening, Reggie? Do you have any insight? Also, I, we, we both taught at Kansai Gaida University, which is a foreign language school. <clears throat> so we often saw uh, many mixed couples. You know, traditionally, it's the foreign man and Japanese woman, but all that's changing too, I think. You see more couples where it's the Japanese man and the foreign woman mm -hmm. that are dating. Do you have any ideas on why cross-cultural relationships and cross-cultural marriages are becoming more <clears throat> Uh, accepted or more popular in Japan now? I don't know if I have anything particular idea. It's just the way the world is going. You know, there's more interaction uh, mm -hmm. with other cultures and so on. The world is becoming much more, in spite of all the resistance to it in the world, the world is becoming much more interactive. Um, mm -hmm. Information exchange, the ability, well, pre-pandemic, the ability to go so many, so many different places that you... Um, you know, like my parents hardly ever traveled outside the U.S. when I was a kid. You know, now people do it all the time or used to do it, you know, and yeah. probably will again. So there's just a lot more. The world is becoming more interactive, you know. So, mm. so I, I was uh, I visited this uh, CEO just uh, a few weeks ago. He's probably maybe in his 60s. So he got married to a foreign woman. Mm. Um, probably 20 years ago, and his right. family disowned him. His father said, if you marry this foreign woman, right. who's very attractive, by the way, she, he showed mm. me his, uh, her picture, mm. um, we will kick you out of the family. And he, to his credit, at least from my perspective, he married her anyway, and he was kicked out of his family. That happens. That happens. Yeah. I mean, this is one of the possible stresses that there are a lot of there are stresses in any marriage. It's just that I think you have more options and opportunities for stress in a cross-cultural marriage because of these yeah. kinds of things. You know, it's still two people, you know, together. And and I know some people who claim that a cross-cultural marriage is no different from any other marriage. You know, oh, I disagree with that. I, I I do too. But some people think this, and uh, okay. it's basic. Yeah. It's basically the, in my experience, the people who think this are are um, the ones who are the, the same culture person. In other words, the, the, in Japan, in the Japan and not Japanese, the people who think that, there's, that it's, it's just, it's the Japanese people who tend to think that way. But the foreigners doing all this, if you're living in Japan, you've got all this constant adaptation to Japan as a culture, things that are not normal to you, things that you're getting used to, that you adapt to and stuff like this. And, and your spouse is the person who's the expert in Japanese culture, so that put, that creates a little bit of a higher kind of a hierarchical aspect in the marriage that you have to deal with. So there's a lot of these kinds of things. Yeah. Do you find that <clears throat> language is a, a factor as well? For example, if oh, the absolutely. foreign partner has very strong Japanese skills, maybe the cross-cultural stresses are less as opposed to a, a a foreign partner where maybe their Japanese is not so good? Yeah, I think that every couple develops their their couple language. Okay. And whether it's whether it's basically it's usually one language or the other, um, uh, the the native language or the foreign language, um, with but there's always some kind of mixture in too. It's, uh, communication is I think is very important. It's one of the basic stresses in a cross cultural marriage because it's when you have stresses, when you have difficulties and stuff, you tend to revert to your learned experience from your past. 
<laughs> and if your ways of dealing with stress are different and your and how you communicate these things is different then or has differences um mm. then it, it becomes very challenging mm. so you know uh, you've been to hawaii uh, and I, i've been there as well it's it's when i see same culture couples in in hawaii you know when you see a white woman with a white mm. guy or a black woman mm. with a black guy it's like what what's going on there Mm. It, that's that's the exception to the rule. So right. Hawaii has mixed culture marriages. I mean, that's that seems to be, from my observation, a common pattern. But then they're probably Americans. So even though they may be mixed ethnicity, they still have more or less the same cultural background, unless they're immigrants and so forth. So <clears throat> I guess there's the challenge of cross-cultural marriages in Japan, which would be much, much more distinct and stronger than as opposed to cross-cultural or cross-ethnicity marriages in Hawaii. Well, the, foreign, the person who comes from the foreign country has done some adaptation to American culture, right? You know, as well as 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 a well as well as Hawaiian culture. So it, it the the basis is different mm. than um, than when you're having a cross-cultural marriage in Japan or any other country. Okay. So <clears throat> let's say you have a couple that's uh, in therapy with you mm. right now. How do you help them understand these issues? Or, or maybe what advice would you give to people who are viewing this show that maybe are dating mm. a Japanese woman or, or a foreign woman or a mm. foreign man for that matter? Mm. What would you suggest that they think about or do in order to increase the chances of the relationship being successful, if it's something that they're thinking about long term? Well, some of this is just kind of basic communication. You know, mm -hmm. you, need to, you need to be able to express yourself as well as hear and have empathy for the other person's uh, position. So this is just kind of, I mean, working with couples, this is one of the basic things that I do is that yeah. I just, it's just trying to be able to listen and say your piece and listen to the other person um, at the yeah. same time, you know, which is a challenge. So this yeah. is one of the, this is a basic thing that I do when I'm working with couples. Part of it is just awareness. A lot of the time people get into these things and they don't think it's cultural. I mean, yeah. they get into a, they get into a, um, um a spat or something you know some kind of difficulty or whatever it might be and they don't think it's cult they don't think it's cultural just kind of they just it doesn't occur to them sometimes i'll point things out if i if i see things that are are cultural and so on mm -hmm. um sometimes sometimes the cultural thing is is uh, um is obvious um but uh um but basically i say that you need flexibility you know, you have to appeal to the I kind of appealing to the kind of person you need to be to be have have a successful relationship. You know, you need mm -hmm. to have a diversity point of view, mm -hmm. um, patience mm -hmm. to try. Language ability is important. The more you can improve your language and the other person's each other's language, the easier it's going to be. Mm, OK, um, you know, basics, basic things in in life like money. You know, and raising children, these kinds of things, um, uh, how you live in a daily basis, these these sort of things. You know, you need to uh, um, you need to sort these things out. I usually say to people that um, you need to meet in the middle. You have two people, that are, you know, but this is true in any relationship. You have two people who have differences, and you've got to find that place in between in the relationship to meet in the relationship, mm -hmm. and um, and that's what. That's what people need to do. Particularly, there's, I think there's, you have it in any relationship, but in a cross-cultural relationship, you have more of that. So getting back to the divorce uh, statistics, uh, they, they do seem to be uh, a little higher mm. in the US and also with mixed couples, but uh, a little bit lower for Japanese Japanese although it's increasing Reggie I remember when the it was 20 percent in in Japan so it's changed wow. what over the last wow. 20 years or so so it's doubled almost 
Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> From what you remember. And also, when you talk to Japanese people, they have no idea that the divorce rate is as high as it, it, it is, because there's still this perception mm. that when people get married, they mm. tend not to want to divorce, or society kind of frowns upon it, or certainly mm. if there's children, it's almost mm. impossible uh, from a societal perspective to, to consider it. Although, obviously, more and more Japanese people are doing it. <clears throat> but you noted that to me before we came on air that even though the divorce rate is higher, there mm. are other differences in terms of why people stay married and so mm. forth. So we talked about having well, affairs. Well, the divorce rate is, is higher than it used to be, but it's still lower than what it is in the US. Oh, yes. Right. Correct. Right. right. And uh, um, and my my take on that is that I don't from this is just anecdotal evidence, just my own personal experience and talking to other Japanese people. It's not statistics. But I think that the percentage of good marriages and bad marriages is about the same in both countries. So it's okay. just that Americans get divorced quicker or more or whatever than than Japanese people do. And um, and Japanese people tend to stay married more when they have a bad marriage than Americans do. That's my that's my take on it. And mm -hmm. there, there's lots of reasons for why Japanese tend to stay married. It has to, but one of the basic reasons is the culture. Is that you're supposed to stay married, and they don't think in terms of 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 divorce in a lot of situations. They don't think mm -hmm. of it as an option. So how they, but then how you end up meet, it's common for me to meet Japanese people who say, I've got a bad marriage. I'm not, my wife or my husband is blah, 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 you know, and, uh, but we never socialize together. We never do things together. I mean, it's like they have like a separate life outside the house. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, and the res one of the results of this, I think, is that the affair rate is higher in Japan than it is in the U.S. Mm. You know, I have I don't have any statistics for that, but that's just my my personal talk. I've met more people who are doing this kind of thing in Japan than they stay married because they think they have to. That may tie into the defined gender roles that exist mm. in Japan. You know, the role of a man historically mm. is to work right. and be a provider. And I don't know if it's so true today. But when I was working in the corporate world here in Japan, men identified with their companies more than they identified with their families. That was for sure. Right. Like I'm right. a Hitachi guy or I'm a Sumitomo right. guy. And women's role, uh, I think it's a cultural tent, tends to enforce it is uh, as a mother right. and participating in the family. Again, that's changing because there are more women working, but still right. those stereotypes, those, those cultural uh, <clears throat> patterns still are out there. So maybe this dual life that you're talking about is links to the definition that the culture is setting for what a man should do in society and what a female should do, a woman should do in society. Right? No, I think, think that's, that's true. That traditionally, the basis of, of Japanese marriages is, is family and function. It's mm. more of a, it's more of, I think it's more of a functional approach to marriage. Mm. You know, you do this roles and so on. You do this, I do that. And uh, um, whereas you talk to people in, the, in America, in the West, and they feel like that the basis of a marriage is love. Often that's one of the things that we'll say. You know, I see. <laughs> you know, but you don't find that in Japan. It's, that's, that's very, even today, that's rare. I remember once talking with a couple and the man told me all their problems and so on. And then at the end of it, he goes, well, as long as we love each other, we'll be able to get through all of this stuff. Mm. And I turned to his wife and I said, what do you think of that? And she hadn't mm -hmm. even been listening. So I told her what, you know, what he said. And I said, do you agree with that? Do you think love is what's going to get through all this? And she said, yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> wow. No. And I said to her, well, what is going to get you through all of this? And she says, well, I don't know. I haven't really thought about it, but I know it's not love. You know, 
And uh, it, that's the, that's the, that's kind of one of the differences. The the emotional. There's I think there's more distance in in relationships in 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 Japan. The, there's a well, private the Tina Turner self. song is appropriate. The Tina Turner song is appropriate here. What's love got to do with it? <laughs> <laughs> Tina, Tina Turner becomes a national idol, right? <laughs> so Reggie, we're, we're quickly, we're unfortunately running out of time. This went by so quickly. Mm. Do you have any um, recommendations on resources uh, for um, well, couples or individuals who are thinking about a cross-cultural relationship or are or, or in well, one I mean, currently? The basic or, thing is just obviously, the, I mean, if, if, if you need counseling, you can contact Reggie if you're in a marriage and you're having some issues or even well, if you're see, not. This you is, can... See, this is, I mean, books like this, it's an intercultural oh, okay. marriage, promise and pitfall. You know, there's, mm. there's, there's, uh, this book is, is, oh, it's quite, it's like maybe 20 years old now. I've had it for a long time. But mm -hmm. there are books like this that are, um, it's published by the Intercultural, Intercultural Press. In, it's in the US. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it's not just about, uh, it's about intercultural marriages, issues that come up all around the world. Um, but there are plenty of books, other books like this. And I mean, so this is one, this is definitely um, another book I mean, this is more cultural specific, but this is really for people who are, this is for Thais and Western marriages, Thailand mm. fever, right? It's really excellent for the, between the, the marriages between the two cultures. I mean, between yeah. Thai and Western cultures. I didn't then, mention in the intro that, that uh, Reggie worked at a Thai university for three years. So he has a cultural living experience in Thailand as well. Hey, Reggie, we yeah. just have one minute. I got a question that came okay. in. Question, I guess for both of us, <clears throat> would you recommend a cross-cultural marriage? Oh, absolutely. Me too. <laughs> Despite all the pitfalls and challenges that we talked about over the it's last- It's just uh, that you need to have an open mind and you need to ask questions because all of the surprises that happen, at, particularly like in Japan, after you get married, it's very common for the, the non-Japanese spouse to find out things about their Japanese spouse that they didn't expect. Mm -hmm. Like one guy was telling me the other day, he did. He never knew his wife was had OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. She never oh. told him until after they got married. I see. And that's the kind of thing that happens. You know, they yeah. they consider it personal information. They don't tell anybody. They don't tell anybody until they get married. And all of a sudden, you realize, like this particular person did, you realize he was in a situation where he's going to have to deal with it, and he didn't have any choice right. at that point. So. Interesting. All right, Reggie. Well, thank you okay. so much. This has been interesting. And uh, for any of you who are interested in contacting Reggie, uh, I guess, Reggie, they can Google your name. Do you have a website? Yeah, I have a website. Yes. Okay, great. So you can contact him. He lives in Kyoto, Japan, but he does uh, counseling also remotely. I mean, he started doing that, I guess, through COVID as everybody has done so. So uh, you can reach him even if you're not in Japan, if you'd like to gain his expertise. All right, so that's okay. the end of our show. Thank you uh, so much, Reggie, once again, <clears throat> on talking about this interesting topic. And I'll see you guys all in, I'm not actually, the next uh, show is on Memorial Day, so we'll miss that. So I'll see you in a month or so, and we'll have another interesting topic about looking to the East. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.